Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, and welcome back. We're here uh, once again for episode 105 here at Cloud Open and LinuxCon, and we're also uh, here at the initial Open Daylight uh, event, Open Daylight sort of community event. We're here with three dudes who are doing a bunch of stuff around Open Daylight and around software-defined networks. Uh, Brent Salisbury, Kyle Mestry, Chris Wright. Uh, Guys, welcome to the show. Um, Real quick before I do that, we need to do a, a quick... Thank you to our sponsors who've been our sponsors all week, uh, both Open at Citrix as well as the Linux Foundation, uh, giving us this cool space, letting us talk to all you guys. Uh, real quick, introduce all yourselves. Tell us what you're doing around both SDN and or Open Daylight. So, Brent, go ahead and kick it off. Hey, uh, Brent Salisbury. Uh, work at a university. Uh, blog at Network Static. Uh, on Twitter at Network Static. And uh, committer on the OVSDB Daylight Project. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, hi, this is Kyle Mestri. Um, I work at Cisco um, in the office of the CTO, working on OpenStack and Open vSwitch and uh, how this all integrates with Open Daylight and all of these sort of things as well. So you, uh, I blog at uh, siliconloons.com and uh, follow me on Twitter at Mestri. Chris? Uh, my name is Chris Wright. I work at Red Hat. I've been involved with OpenStack sort of since Quantum was just coming into being, and now it's called Neutron. And uh, Red Hat is a, a, a core founding member of the Open Daylight Project, uh, and I'm, I'm the primary representative there helping build out open source network virtualization uh, functionality across controller and all the way through to something like OpenStack. Very cool. So uh, first, thanks for all guys for being here. So let's let's sort of start with the basic stuff. So uh, Open Daylight as a Linux Foundation project got started about six months ago. Is that right? Three to six months ago, give or take. Um, and now you guys are here. There's a separate track for Open Daylight. What what's that going to be about? I think it's Wednesday, right? It's tomorrow. The the big Open Daylight stuff. Right. Give us a sense of like. What's going to happen there for folks who've been to other, you know, events, OpenStack Summit or other, like, what are you guys expecting? How many people? What are the big topics to discuss? So the the format is is sessions intermixed with the rest of LinuxCon and CloudOpen. Okay. Um, we'll start off with kind of a panel discussion, framing some of the problems, maybe, you know, trying to get a sense of what people are trying to do with, with SDN. Um, and then we'll... Take you know, take you through the first release, all the details of what will be in the first release, um, kind of from a high level, and then we'll take some deeper dives down into a few specific applications, uh, mostly in the network virtualization space associated with the Open Daylight controller. Okay, and and as far as you guys are involved, are you presenting? Are you part of the panels? What's your role? What's your what's your role in it? All of the above. I'm on a panel. <laughs> I'm on a panel as well, the same one as you. In fact, all right, yeah. We should get our story straight. I think we should. That's a good point. <laughs> so, so this is this is kind of a, a different. I mean, a lot of times on the show we'll have folks that work at the vendors. I mean, when we come to some of the open stack event or the open source events, it's you know kind of a mix, right? You're, you're here as a developer. You're here as a vendor. Brent, you you work at a you know quote unquote what we all vendors like to call customers. Like um, one of those mythical. What, one of those mythical. Yeah, you're, you're like a unicorn at these things. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, without having without having to get into a lot of details, like um, as a as an end user of the technology, like what's what's driving you to SDN, like use cases, and, and what what you know what got you interested in Open Daylight? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I definitely am kind of the token chill customer on uh, daylight right now. Sure, this guy walking around the big page with a big uh, checkbook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not even that because I don't even have the checkbook. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, th- I think it's kind of, I'd love to, it surprises me that there's not more kind of independent people jumping into this yet. Uh, but it's really early, so it's only been six months. Uh, I think it's going to be, a, a, it's a tough shift for all of networking. So, I mean, I have a networking background. Uh, I don't have a development background, so I'm like, you know, don't sleep and try and, you know, figure out how to be a software developer with guys that have been doing this for, you know, 15 and 20 years. Uh, So, you know, networking in itself has to shift, and uh, I'm a little bit concerned about it to some degree. Uh, So if you talk to anybody doing network virtualization and things, you know, particularly integrated with OpenStack, 
they don't need the network guy. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just the truth. Now, there's still fabric that has to be managed. It doesn't mean, you know, I think uh, Casado said it best when it's evolution and not extinction. But the evolution part is important because there's going to be evolution that has to happen or else, you know, plumbing VLANs isn't going to last forever. Uh, so I'd love to see, like, more networking-centric focus guys come on. But either way, it's, I'm... As soon as there's going to be a lot of community people kind of getting involved, and in, uh, you know, I think the first ones that start coming in are the ones that reap the most from it and kind of shape the future and the direction of open daylight. So you're you're kind of going through that that thing that I hear from a lot of I'll call it traditional networking guys. All of a sudden, they're being told like you need to learn Python, right? Just at a, and, and yeah. they're going, uh, like, <laughs> like, where do I even start with that? Like I. I've been a CLI guy for 10, yeah. 15 years. What do you mean i got to learn Hello Python? And, and, <laughs> right, yeah. So, you know, without getting way off track, like, how are you doing that as, as somebody, like you said, who was a, a network guy for a long time? Yeah, you know, I mean, just uh, a lot of coffee, no sleep, uh, probably just, tending hard to jump, Just jump in the deep end and start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much no. living on IRC. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the great thing, I mean, particularly around, like, daylight, there's an awesome community uh, I mean, they're really nice guys. It's not like you're going into the, you know, Linux kernel mailing list and asking, you know, how do I, how do, I do this, you know, function. Uh, so they're super nice. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of have to do it. I mean, no, you, nobody can learn it for you. And uh, But it's, you know, it's honestly, it's not that bad if a dyslexic dumb guy like me can do it. Anybody can do it. <laughs> so that's good. So... So give us the, I mean, what's the basic state of, of daylight at this point? I mean, it's, you're having this event, uh, you know, you're, the, the conference is sort of going on, there's a release, sort of 1.0 release that's coming out soon, like what's the sort of state of the software, the state of the community, uh, the project, what's what's going on with it at a high level? Well, I, I mean, I, one thing I'd like to say is that it's, it's an interesting point because like last week we just had the Hackfest, for example, so we got everyone together. And we're still hashing through things at this point and making a lot of good progress. People are still bringing proposals to the table a little bit and adding things in. So so I think this is, in my mind, this is an interesting time, the, um, the first Open Daylight Mini Summit here, for, for us to kind of share with, with everybody outside of the Open Daylight um, family, maybe, like what we're, what we're doing and where we're at and maybe what the release might look like when we have that first release, so... Yeah. Right. I mean, does it does it still feel like? I mean, because there's a, there's a bunch of proposals, right? I mean, there's been a couple of major vendors who brought some code with them. You know, whether it was Cisco or Big Switch or IBM or others. There's been some people who have come and go or reset what they wanted to do. I mean, does it feel like you're getting close to a 1.0 architecture? Or is it still like I'm not trying to put it in one light or the other, but I mean, th- does it feel like the, the 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 bread or the dough is starting to get formed, or is there still a lot of it's discussion because there's still a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I think it's a little, it's a little of everything. So, yeah. with the core controller, it's reasonably well baked. Okay, it it, it came it has been with an architecture right. predating yes. this this project. Okay, um, the, the 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 group the community has grown. We've got roughly like a dozen different projects associated with the community. So we went from. Uh, just a controller to controller, some extra services, some applications, um, some some really interesting technology shifts within the controller broken out as separate projects. What we'll be able to deliver in the first release, definitely the controller. Um, there are a number of projects that have differing, whether it's protocol handling or adding a few extra uh, services that are needed by a particular application that sit on top, so almost like a vertical integration um, for a single app, Th- those will come along as well. Um, from from my point of view, and I think probably all of us here around the table, the most interesting part is how well uh, the, the best application is OpenStack. So how well are we integrated with with OpenStack? And then put those two things together and actually manage tenant networks. And I think the answer will be yes. We're already seeing you know there's the, the, the code drops we have right now can demonstrate that. It's kind of about the enterprise quality, or you know, okay. how robust is it? Does it actually work in all the corner cases? But that basic functionality um, is, is emerging already. So, okay. so it's one. It's uh, so the, the, it's actually a platform that isn't 
geared towards a specific use case. I, I think that's kind of it's worth noting that you know we don't. I mean, I think the aim is to have this platform that can have that applicability to a service provider use case yeah. all the way down to a network virtualization use case, rather than just kind of a watermelon that does one thing. Right. Uh, so and it's kind of driven by that modularity uh, framework. Modular framework for me. Yeah, I was going to ask that when you were when you were talking about you know like it started as this one thing and some project. Is it is it kind of shaping up a little bit like OpenStack where you've got this OpenStack umbrella, but it really is a bunch of projects underneath it, and there'll be there'll bit. be sort of like core things, and then there'll be yeah. experimental. Is yeah, that, that what it's shaping the, up to the, be the, the, the premise, like the um, project lifecycle document documents exactly that. Okay. So. As you emerge as a core piece of functionality that other people are depending on, uh, you can ask to be promoted to be core. Okay. Um, and a core piece would probably need to be delivered in any deliverable of, of open daylight. Um, and as you get out towards the periphery, you could be just a new incubation project that could be experimental and may not make it or um, has such a niche focus that it could become a mature project but doesn't really have that need to be promoted into the core. So definitely an analysis to that kind of okay. open stack structure. Yep. And from an open stack perspective, you guys expect, you know, so like an open stack, if you're a storage, let's say you're a storage company, vendor, whatever, like there's a bunch of places you can plug in. Do you guys expect from a daylight perspective, it's going to be Neutron, that's the focus for a while, or do you expect there's going to be a bunch of networking pieces you're going to have to deal with? Uh, it's the need, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the immediate need for SDN is, yeah. is you know, network control and OpenStack deployments. Okay. But there is some interesting questions in there because, for example, um, if you want to deploy some of your network services in virtual machines, so you, you, you launch a new application, the application starts sending traffic, the SDN controller sees that traffic and realizes that that application needs, say, a firewall in front of it, that firewall is put in a virtual machine, you might need to talk to um, Nova yeah. to boot up a VM and put it on the hypervisor closest to where the application workload is running. So there's, you know, there's going to be a little bit more integration, I think, than just okay. Neutron directly, but initially we just got to get things to track yeah. and get it rolling. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we're going to do uh, for anybody listening is we're going to get these guys to do some visualization on the whiteboard and kind of draw out some of this stuff too so if you're if you're in your in your head you're trying to picture all this stuff we'll put some stuff in the show notes that hopefully we'll visualize it let these guys explain kind of the thinking and where stuff will plug together whether it's open daylight or open stack and um so look look forward to that as well it'll be in the show notes um so you know sometimes it's it's good to draw analogies to stuff people kind of know so you know open stack for example went through a period where um, you know, it was the community was kind of developing stuff, like vendors, for example, that are saying, "Look, I've got technology that people use. Would like to plug in." You know, so storage is, a, is an example, right? And people started building Cinder plugins or Swift plugins or whatever. Like, has Daylight moved to that stage yet, or is it still very much just community-driven code? And you know, where any sort of traditional network vendor, whether you're a Palo Alto or you're an F5 or you're a Cisco, would plug, is it going to be like sort of a pluggable type of architecture or give us a sense of like where where will companies plug into this or where, where does, you know, where does southbound interfaces and northbound interfaces, how does that all sort of work out? Well, I, I like also using analogies. Okay. So sure. my, uh, and I come from a kernel development background, I'm a okay. Linux kernel hacker from, from my past. And so I view um, the the core controller, uh, very analogous to the, a kernel in an operating okay. system. And within that kernel, you have device drivers that are talking to specific devices. That would, in, in my analogy, that's that's the southbound components in the open daylight controller that are talking a particular protocol to particular switches, whether they're physical or virtual. You have some kind of abstraction layer in that core kernel or in the controller that's providing interfaces to applications. So whether that's open read write from a kernel to get to file systems, or whether that's um, you know topology discovery or something from from a uh, controller point of view, it's that same concept. And it's then on top of the controller, you have applications. Okay. So open daylight really encompasses all those. It needs some of the southbound pieces to talk to real hardware and, and software. It needs some of the consistent interfaces so that you can build applications applications could be a lot of different things and 
you know, mostly here we're talking about essentially OpenStack being an application sitting on top of, of Open Daylight. But you could imagine, um, you know, there, there's an interesting project in the Open Daylight community that's about distributed denial of service. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's something that a cloud provider could could host as a service within their um, cloud, and that's essentially an application sitting on top of the core controller augmented by a new service that's needed specifically for the distributed uh, denial of service application. Okay. Um, and, you know, so it's, I don't know if that explains it Yeah, well. no, that's, that's good. But, but that's I don't good. think it's going to turn into doing lots of things just mediocre. I mean, I, I think there's a solid framework that says, you know, you can really, I mean, it's really, it's kind of this idea of horizontal, I mean, I'm a network guy, so it's, I live in the mainframes and whatnot. Uh, it's like, you know, we, we've lived vertically when we deal with the network, you know, right. from operations all the way down to architecture. So, you know, it's when that starts to horizontalize, now you can take this one little piece of something, pull it out of the stack, innovate on it, and then put it back in. So it's just, it's never existed. We, you know, we deliver features and, and functionality and hardware life cycles and not software life cycles. Right, right. So, and then one other thing to your point about the vendors and where do the vendors plug in. So... Neutron has traditionally been where this has happened. And even in this last Havana cycle, which just ended, we saw kind of a flurry of new vendors trying to plug things in. And so as we look to try to integrate Open Daylight with Neutron, that's one of the things that, that's one of the questions that comes up. And one thing that we talk about is, you know, do we, we'd like to kind of maybe see that in, in Open Daylight instead, the vendors kind of plugging into that. Yeah. Um, maybe rather than Neutron, that's that's one of the things that's under discussion now. Right, and that but, probably gets driven by use cases right. or by yeah, what they want to do. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So so you were talking about the Hackfest you guys did last week. I mean, give us a sense of like what what areas were people hacking on. You know, like one question that I have all the time is I've heard people say like, we're going to build uh, applications for the network, right? Yeah. And you'll hear stuff like, well, we built a TAP application or we built a traffic... An like, Give me some sense of like what, where are people kind of experimenting? What stuff are they finding interesting? Or is that the kind of stuff they were hacking on last week? Well, so so I actually, I've been participating in these remotely, so I bring maybe a little different perspective than Chris, who I think has been there in person. Brent was there. Brent was there too for this one. But so, so and, and you know, remotely works great. That They've done a great job with making it so people can be there or not. But I mean, and, and I know we talked about this, but one of the main areas that we spent a lot of time discussing was OpenStack integration. And the, part of the reason for that was there was a few different groups that had been looking at OpenStack integration and were at various stages of proof of concepts or thinking about how this was going to work. So I think last week's HackFest in particular was really useful to bring everyone to the same page at least to say this is what we've done or this is what we've thought about. And so maybe now everyone is at least level set and we can kind of move forward with, with that thinking. Right. I think at least as a team, I think as a broader team with people from all the different companies participating in Open Daylight and individuals and everything. So, but What we don't want to do yeah. as an Open Daylight community yeah. is go to the OpenStack Neutron development community yeah. and say... Open Daylight's awesome. Here's our 12 different plugins. <laughs> yeah. So we, we needed Take to, them all. to yeah. sort of herd our own cats and get yeah. get some alignment so right. that we, we have a coherent story when we go try to integrate with OpenStack. Yeah. No. Nope. And yeah. that was a big part of, of yeah. the, the hack. So, yeah, that was that was a Well, they're doing... It's yeah. pretty cool. Like, and you probably know them by heart. I don't, but so there's different packages, basically, at least three of them that are going to be kind of focused on different functions. So, like, you know, I don't know if it's going to be called cloud or not, but you know, something that'll have uh, a network virtualization focus all the way to a service provider focus, because you've got you've got different companies doing things like you know. Uh, all kinds of BGP trickery and Lisp and all these different, you know, right. more SP-focused stuff that's more coarse rather than kind of fine mm -hmm. network virtualization stuff. Yeah, spinning up VLANs or a load balancer is 100% different than doing, you know, Traffic ASP yeah. or yeah. 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 BGP yeah. and, yeah, different. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I'm kind of curious, and, and you, you kind of brought it up early on when you were talking about, you know, network guys transitioning or even just skill sets and people talk about DevOps and this idea that like, yeah, the whole teams kind of work together. I mean, is this going to, is this going to create something? I mean, you, you never know, but is this going to create something where the, the networky centric guys would kind of run the daylight platform and the apps guys would kind of run the OpenStack platform or like, where do you, have you see, gotten any sense from people of, you know, certain traditional skills focusing on certain projects and others on others or, cause it feels like, especially for networking, 
Neutron will do certain things, and like you said, yeah. Daylight will do different things, and where does it stop? And Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's an interesting question, and I think part of the way to answer that is, is, is how you want to utilize something like OpenStack. Do you want to utilize it like a traditional enterprise virtualization platform? I mean, if that's your case, then you're going to have a, maybe a divide. Your network guys are going to do things there they've been doing for a long time it's well defined but if you start to think of it as an elastic cloud platform where you're deploying apps on top i think it changes the paradigm and i think the people writing those apps have different needs than what the traditional networking people have been trying to expose to them right i mean they don't necessarily want to think about ports and plugging things in and yeah. subnets they just want things to talk to each other so I think that Open Daylight can can help to enable that by providing an API on top that can hopefully abstract away a lot of that. So, that's my thoughts. Very cool. Well, listen, um, I think we're we're kind of hitting the point where you know folks uh, stop listening because they're you know, done with their commute or it gets too long for a run. But uh, so where you know if folks want to go, uh, you know, go take a look at the code, hack on it, learn some of the stuff that's going out there. Like, what's the best place to get started with Daylight, or you know, what are you guys finding? a good starting point for people so i'll tackle that just from my perspective as a non you know inside baseball uh no idea what happens and don't care what happens in silicon valley (laughs) 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 no i mean so the best way is just jump on irc get on the open daylight channel uh there's a lot of people on there that are really cool really nice guys and really dedicated to it regardless of vendor affiliation and anything else uh, I mean, for the, some of the traditional networks and even systems guys, it's this is a once every 20 years opportunity to, you know, have your imprint on the future of networking. So, uh, you know, it's not it's a it's a, as low a barrier to entry as there will ever be because three four years from now it, it's probably going to be pretty baked and there's going to be a lot of kind of you know. <laughs> so yeah, just jump on and hit up any of us because we're all on there. Okay, very cool. But. Um, no, that's it, there's a bunch of information too on the wiki.opendaylight.org. Okay. So there's getting started guides and architectural documents and pointers to IRC, pointers to mailing lists. Cool. Um, so all that framework is kind of like like you were saying that's the sort of non-hackery work that you've been getting yeah, put in place. Right. And, right. The, cool. the behind the scenes get the community bootstrapped, and now we can focus on building the community and yeah. delivering the, the project. Very cool. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for the time and. Uh, want to take us home and then we'll go do some whiteboarding. Yes. Uh, before we go, we need to once again thank our sponsors, Open at Citrix, open.citrix.com, and the Linux Foundation, linuxfoundation.org. Um, if you like the show, please tell a friend and leave us a review on iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at thecloudcastnet or on the web at thecloudcast.net where you can find links to everything in the podcast. Thanks for listening.